Hey everyone, uh, welcome to BRC Builds again. Today, I want to do a little walkthrough of the finished product for our kitchen renovation. All of these cabinets were like a dark wood with veneer and this counter was like a Formica white counter that was coming apart at the seams. We had a, a drop-in white sink that was definitely losing a lot of its its shine and luster. So we, we had our work cut out for us and what we ended up doing was just starting with the kitchen cabinets. We could have replaced all the cabinets but ultimately it would have been so expensive and we wanted to do this on a budget. Came down to taking off all of these doors, taking off all the hardware that was on, and then uh, cleaning, sanding, and then starting the refinish process. What I did was use an orbital sander, which took out so much of the work, but there are still places where you have to go into these smaller grooves and hand sand. If there's a lot of grease or grime or anything built up and you don't take that down and then scuff up the surface so there's a, a gritty enough surface for the paint to adhere to, then you're gonna have it where the paint would peel off if you scratched it or something. I took all of these, brought them into my shop because I wanted to spray them since it's the easiest way to get in all the grooves and get a good fine, like finer finish. I actually used a sprayer that's hooked up to like an air compressor and it, it shoots the paint through it um, and atomizes it. I realized actually after the fact uh, that I used the wrong primer. And what ended up happening is that some of the stains in the wood ended up showing through and it would show through multiple coats of paint. And so I learned a valuable lesson that if you're, if you're using a primer on kitchen cabinets, it really makes sense to go with the, the bin shellac based primer. And what that does is it completely covers the surface and doesn't let any of the greases or uh, maybe anything in the wood grain seep through because once it seeps through, it will come through all layers of paint. And so once we put down that really good shellac based primer, we had no issues of anything coming through. And then we were able to put our three coats down of a nice white cabinet paint. We added these pulls and they were really affordable and they made a huge difference. I think that pulls can really add to a kitchen and especially because we didn't have any. Um, they updated the look and not to mention they made like using the kitchen that much better. We did not paint on the inside. The, the wood veneer in there uh, works well with the white on the outside and it was like so much less work to not have to go in there and paint. The bottom of these were like scratched. They were looking pretty terrible. And so we just wanted a clean look. And what we did was buy a peel and stick shelf liner or pretty much like a thin vinyl adhesive. We just rolled it out on all of the interiors and I think it ended up really giving it a good clean feel. These drawers, as you'll find with some older drawers or cheaper drawers, they did not have these drawer slides on them. Some of them were just in there like based off friction and they were just, they would just slide along the bottom without anything actually guiding them out. Clearly something's a little wrong here. This backside has popped out, taking some of that veneer off with it, and it's gapped out there. And so the things are just weighing it down and falling out of the crack. So what I'm gonna do is square this up again, push this sheet back into its groove, and on the back as well, and then put glue, and then pin nail it all in. And so you can revive these things that are, <laughs> they're kind of dying right in front of you. Before I add these slides, there was no room to put anything in and you might encounter that issue if you have an old school drawer. So what I did was I cut in um, enough space to add these slides and then I put plywood going along the length so that I could screw this in. And so you have to refigure inside to be able to fit those slides in. But ultimately, if, if that's something that you think is gonna be worth it, I think it's worth the time. Um, then moving on from paint, we knew the next thing we were gonna to go to were these countertops. Here's the final product before we replace these countertops with butcher block. And these countertops have been freshly wiped down, but even so, they just show a lot of grime and dirt. So it'll be so nice to no longer have bright white countertops in the kitchen where we're always spilling things and food gets all over them. But soon it'll be time <laughs> to get rid of these. That's right. Demo day right now. Demo day. Let's go. 
Let's go. All right. Woohoo! We did it. We are on our top list. So we found these Birch Butcher Block from Home Depot for $209. And that's roughly a two by eight foot unfinished butcher block. Once we pulled out the old counters and went to fit it, we realized that this was nowhere near level. These, these cabinets, uh, they dropped a an inch and a half from this corner to that far corner over there. To level this whole area out, you want to start, start at the highest point because if you were to start at a lower point, it means you'd have to end up shading down. And that's a lot harder in my opinion than putting shims to raise up. And the way we did it was actually with a, with a laser level and we would continue to add shims. Um, and then once we just worked our way all the way to that corner, we knew that everything was level and good to go. There's naturally gonna be a gap on that far side um, between these cabinets and then where the countertop is. So what I ended up doing was fabbing up some custom trim and I took quarter inch plywood and I just cut it to the, the space I needed and I ran it all along and then I just painted it white. It really blends in. And I think that just goes to show that if you're working on something and there ends up being a gap or there's an issue, very often you can use caulk or you can use uh, some sort of trim and you can hide that. And that's the beauty of doing good finished carpentry. So once the countertop, we knew that it was level. We, we set in the unfinished counters, saw how we wanted them to sit. And we had a choice. We could have a 45 degree miter angle right here where they would butt up, or we could just make a straight cut and, and have a, what they call a butt joint up against it. And it's an easier cut to do that, that uh, butt joint right there. And so we went with that. We were able to make a note of where we needed to cut. We were able to make a note of where the sink would go. We took our time with that. It's the old, the old adage that you, you uh, measure twice, cut once. And when you have $420 worth of nice birch wood, you, you wanna make sure you do it right. Here we go. All right, we're about to cut these butcher blocks so that they fit into our kitchen. We made the straight cuts with a, you could just use a level clamped and then use a, just a circular saw up against it. And that way you can be sure you get a straight cut. For the actual cutout where the sink goes, we used a circular saw on the straight ends, again, using a level as an edge. We actually drilled out the corners to get a nice rounded corner. And then we used a jigsaw to finish it off. We also used a router with an eighth inch roundover bit to round over the interior edge. But to me, it looks like a cleaner, more high end aesthetic. Once we had all the counters cut, dry fit, we knew exactly how they were gonna go in. We put two coats of polyurethane on them. Uh, we went with the satin polyurethane because we, we didn't want the, the high gloss look. There's a lot of different ways you can finish a wood countertop. You can use like a, a Danish oil or a tongue oil or things that you rub in that gives it this really nice soft look and it does not take away from the wood. But the issue is, is that you have to then go back and rub those on and you have to really care for the countertop more. We kind of wanted like something that we would not have to go back and mess with. We wanted something that was going to protect against a red wine spilling. That's where I think polyurethane shines. Ultimately, it's a pretty much like a coat of plastic which doesn't sound great but it actually looks very nice and i still think you get that character of the wood uh, and we went with an oil-based polyurethane because i like how it brings out the amber glow to me it gives a really deep rich good color in this birch so we put on the two coats of polyurethane while these counters were separated and you want to put it on every side of it because if you only seal the top then what will happen is that the wood can warp a little bit uh, moisture can get in the underside and, and wood naturally contracts and expands. But when you seal everything, then it is more stable. Once we had those two, two coats on, we put the two counters together. I attached them with uh, pocket hole screws. And I think that that was probably the easiest way for me to do it. We were able then to put the, uh, the final coat of polyurethane on. The best way 
that I've found to finish off a satin and make it perfect is you put your three coats of polyurethane on. We actually used a brush. And then you sand down that last coat until it's completely smooth and flat and there's no imperfections exactly how you want it. And then you get a can of the spray polyurethane in the same satin finish. And then you just spray it with one good solid coat and you go back and forth and you make it so that final spray just covers it. It doesn't need to be thick or anything. But then you know you can have that, that perfect finish and you don't have to go back and spot sand any imperfections because you've already done that on that third coat. So once these countertops were in, uh, we had the issue of trying to get this undermount sink in. The best way I found to do it is you put the sink in, ideally you have someone helping you, and then you put a bead of silicone sealant on the top, you push it up against, and I took a two towels, a two by four on top of those towels, and then I had a long clamp that I hooked up under the sink and then onto the the two by four, and then I was able to clamp it into place where I wanted it. And then I was, I went under and I installed the clips that hold it into place. But it's really tough if you didn't have anything to hold this in place because it's heavy and you need it for it to be perfect when you go and put those screws in. And to make the hole for the faucet, I got a hole saw and at the right width, so it was maybe an inch and a half, and I made sure to to center that. And then I, I made that one, one hole, I sanded the inside and I put polyurethane on the inside again to seal from any sort of moisture getting in. I installed a new garbage disposal and then it was just a simple fix of cutting the old sewer pipe closer to the wall and, and then reattaching everything. That was actually rotted out and leaking. We had had uh, some Tupperware underneath to catch the drips for the longest time. So I'm stoked about getting a new one in there. We had a old white range hood that wasn't doing much at all for us. And we wanted to update the whole area and keep it with that stainless steel look that I think is really modern and nice and clean. We just found this range hood is just a standard new tone. That was, I believe $70. So a really great deal. And it's not one that vents outside. It just recirculates the air, but it, I think it made a big difference to the look and it works better than our old one. The change we made over here um, was to switch where the microwave was because before it had sat in this cubby here, this, this space, and there was a lot of wasted space on top of it. It was not at the right height for us. I moved this shelf up and we put the microwave in there. This is kind of a hard open, just the way they built it. And so it would always move around. And so a quick little thing we did to make it so it stays in place was to put a piece of thin plywood down and we drilled small holes into the plywood where the feet of the microwave are. And that way the microwave is just steady in that plywood and then we don't have that issue of it moving around. To finish it off, we put this nice contact paper and I think that it just gives it a clean look. The backsplash process was, was actually quite enjoyable and easier than I expected. And it's rare that something's actually less work than you think it would be. And so I was very pleasantly surprised. How are you feeling? I'm feeling ready. We're gonna get it done. So we got this tile on Wayfair and it was 21 square feet for 200 bucks. So a great deal. You want to have a level counter to work up from. Uh, and that again was why it was important to make sure our counters were level in the beginning. We cut, the halves, because you want to alternate, of course. We just had a simple tile cutter that was just a manual tile cutter, not even a wet tile saw. We put this little white PVC strip to end and then just had um, a tile adhesive we put on with a trowel and then we just started working our way down the line. And as we would get to outlet sections, you have to just cut around it for it to fit, of course. And the best way I found to do that is with an angle grinder. Um, you can even pick up an angle grinder for like maybe 10, 15 bucks at Harbor Freight and then a masonry uh, blade. That was maybe $5. So for under 20 bucks, you can get a really useful tool. You may never use it again, but it's cheap enough and it makes uh, short work of cutting tiles in, in kind of more intricate patterns. And then after they dried 24 to 48 hours, went back and filled it in with a grout. The grout we went with was a light gray because it complements the kitchen walls that are also light gray. And then the 
the subtle gray that we have in these tiles. Little design choices like that, I think, tie in everything really well. Final thing to do though, was after we put this tile in, we had some weird gaps between the tile and these upper cabinets. And that was because whenever they installed these cabinets a long time ago, they did not put them in level. And you might come across that issue in any sort of older house where sometimes there's, there's weird spacing, there's non-standard sizing, or they just didn't put them in right. And so what we had to do was think of a way around it. We could have cut the tile to fit that small angle, but we would have to slowly cut it at a bigger and bigger angle. And it would just take in a lot of time. And so what we ended up doing was cutting out this trim that we use under the countertops and just cutting it to fit these custom spots and cover up that gap. And once we painted it with the same paint that we used on all of the cabinets, it really blended in and I think it worked out just fine. Ultimately, one of the biggest game changers in this kitchen actually came down to the lights. We do a lot of cooking in here and you want the whole space to be well lit and like also be cozy. And so we chose under cabinet lights. They were LED, it's a black and decker and it's five different lights. Without any tools, we were able just to run it up under here, spacing it out evenly and using the adhesive that it came with and then running the wire along this window frame and then covering it with this trim seamlessly. It goes from this side to this side uh, and you can't see any of the wiring. The best part about it is the fact that it's motion sensor. So just like that, you can walk away and you're done. Final thing was to put in the new outlets, new outlet covers and make everything consistent and then plug in the light, turn it on and uh, walk away and, and be happy it's done. <laughs> we ended up spending right around 1500 for everything new you see here. Uh, overall, probably spent at least 100 hours in labor in here. You could probably do it faster, but there's certain times when, when we were learning or we took our time, but I think it was well worth it. I mean, $1,500 and your sweat equity, and then you get a space that you really enjoy being in because the kitchen is where we spend a ton of time. I mean, we cook all the time. We're just hanging out in here a lot. Uh, and so this is probably the most meaningful renovation project we've done inside so far. So we're really happy with how it turned out. Uh, we'd love to hear what you all think. So feel free to put it in the comments. Feel free to like and subscribe. It would really mean a lot to us. So thanks for tuning in and checking it out.